Hi guys, we have so much going on this month. I really don't know how we're gonna get it all done. In fact, I know we're not gonna get it all done. There's just no way. We have a gigantic kitchen project that will become several videos down the road. And we're working on some projects outside the shop too. Joe and Miguel have been working on the outside of the building. It's a 130 year old house and it still needs quite a bit of stuff done to it. So that's gonna be going on for the next couple of weeks. And at the same time, we're tearing off a big deck and rebuilding that and we're enlarging the koi ponds because I like fresh fish. All this is supposed to be done during the month of June, but we really only have about three weeks to work with because I'm going to be away at an event at the Charles Neal workshop in mid-June. And I'm also still working on the new book and a couple articles for Woodworking Magazine, so it's just utter madness around here. I did get a chance, though, to have a little bit of fun the other day. At least I got a new toy to play with. I'm not going to say what it is just yet, I'm going to drop some clues and see how far into the video it takes before you can figure it out. First clue I posted actually a few days ago on our social media pages. I told people to guess what the keys went to. A disturbing number of people guessed chastity belt. Anyway, I had to make some room in the shop for it. You may remember a video we did a while back about rearrangeritis, a disease that makes you keep changing things around. In that video, you saw me wrestling with a Tormek cabinet which weighs a ton and it doesn't slide on the floor and I had to keep moving it back and forth trying to figure out where to put it. Well, I had to move it again to make room for this new toy. But this time I got smart. I used a dolly. It was so much easier. If you ever have to move something, save your back, go to Harbor Freight, buy their dolly. It's tough and it's cheap. Now the Tormek cabinet is right back where it started before I made that video a couple months ago. So that was just more wasted time and energy I'll never get back. Now, about that new toy. The freight company dropped it outside the shop. Thankfully, it came in two boxes because fully assembled, it weighs near 500 pounds. Even in pieces, it required something more than even the Harbor Freight dolly to move it. This sucker was Mustache Mike's when he was a locksmith. He used to use it to move safes around, and sometimes he'd use it to move Mrs. Mustache when she put on a few pounds. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Phyllis. The giant tires make it easy to bounce the load over obstacles and into the shop. I had to move some things away from the door to maneuver the load inside, but I finally got over to the general area I wanted it, and then I ripped the box off like the Hulk. Very impressive. This box contained the bottom half of the machine. I put a mobile base under it because I know this is going to get moved around like everything else as my rearrangeritis progresses. This is an HTC mobile base. Most of the mobile bases in our shop are Portimate. HTC is the same company. They're both high quality mobile bases. I highly recommend them. At this point, you may be guessing what the new toy is. Resist the urge to Google that conspicuously placed model number they printed on the front of it. You'll just ruin the fun. Besides, it's starting to take shape now. The top half was way heavier than the bottom. I farted three times trying to lift it in place. It attaches to the base cabinet with four bolts that go in blind holes. It took me forever to align those bolts and get it secured. I could never be a mechanic. I get too frustrated. I'd be pitching wrenches at customers all the time. I did have to do a little bit of wiring too, but I managed to do it without frying myself like the Colonel's chicken. The machine came with a link belt, which I much prefer over regular V-belts because they vibrate less. I recommend putting them on your machines when you upgrade, but they can be a pain to assemble. I see videos online showing how easy they are to go together. That never works that way for me. The tabs on mine are always too stiff and the holes too tight. I usually just insert the lower tab first and then I sort of half cram the upper tab into the hole until I can grab it a little bit with a pair of needle nose pliers from underneath and pull it through. It's not pretty, but it works for me. This machine has a two horsepower motor and it runs on 240 volts. That's a clue if you aren't already figuring out what it is. I have a bad habit of leaving the belt covers off machines. I take them off to change belts and then I lose the screws so they never make it back on. Honestly, though, I don't see the point. Yes, belts are dangerous. Well, woodworking's dangerous, Sally. If you get your arm ripped off, you're a woodworker. Make yourself a new one. But I got to please the man in these videos, so I installed the cover on this machine. If the belt ever has to be changed on the road, I'm making no promises. Meanwhile, the table is covered with all that greasy crud. I used to hate cleaning this packaging grease off new tools so much, I refused to buy new tools but I learned a trick that makes it come off easily. I'll post a video about it, and when that's ready, I'll put a link up at the top of this video so that you can watch it. It's not the way you think, so you're gonna to wanna to check that out, believe me. So, have you figured out what the new toy is yet? It's a 
molding machine. This thing will make just about any molding you can imagine. In fact, it will make any molding you can imagine because if you can't buy a set of already made knives at mywoodcutters.com for it, you can send them a drawing of the profile you want and they'll make custom knives for you. They're a great company. I've been proud to have them as a sponsor for quite a while now. They don't make molding machines, they make the molding knives. Anyway, we're gonna use this machine for our new kitchen cabinet project because we're making mitered doors instead of the standard cope and stick style that you always see. A machine like this really pays off in a situation like that when you have a lot of stock to mill. It's much faster and often safer than doing it on the router table. You'll see what I mean in future videos. In the meantime, I have to get a 240 volt circuit installed for this machine which I'll probably do myself and hopefully I'll survive it. Then I can try to figure out why I have so many extra nuts and bolts left over after I assemble it. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and head over to our website to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always full of great woodworking tips, tricks, and tutorials to make you a better woodworker. You can read and subscribe for free at stumpynubs.com. Then you can sit back and have yourself a cold one because you've earned it, my friend.